guys, today we're going to be talking all things endometriosis, endo's a disease that I have and that Yacht actually has as well. So I'll be explaining my story, Yacht will come in and talk about her story, um, we'll talk about our journey through it, our advice, and then Giorgio will also come in and put his two cents worth as well. And his advice will actually be really valuable because because um, he does work in the fitness industry and he knows a lot about it. So it'd be really good for people suffering to hear his um, opinion as well. So endometriosis, for those of you who don't know, is a disease found in women. Um, it's when the uterus lining is found in parts of your body outside of your uterus. So your uterus lining goes and attaches to all parts of your body where it's not meant to and each month it bleeds from those places. Um, some women um, like me have endo, can, it can come up all the way up to their lungs. I have it up to my diaphragm, um, which they discovered this year. So yeah, it, it, it can be mild, it can be severe. I have stage four, which I think there is only four stages, isn't there? Yeah, so I have the, the worst kind. But I'll let you guys know how I deal with it and coping mechanisms to get through if you do have it. At the moment, there's no like miracle cure for endo. They say that if you fall pregnant, it gets better, but only for a short amount of time, probably for the nine months you are pregnant and then a couple months after that. But once your period starts again, then it just comes back. So unfortunately, there's no cure at the moment. Um, but there are things you can do to help your disease. So I got my period when I was 14 and I had very painful periods. So I would miss school, I would be in bed, you know, teachers and my peers, everyone thought I was a drama queen. I couldn't get out of bed, I was so sick. And I just, you know, it would just be that really bad pain, so bad that you'd throw up or you'd pass out or it was horrible pain. And when I got um, advice from a doctor, they just said to get on the pill to try and stop my period so that pain was minimized. So I did that and I got on Yaz, which is a pill, and I was on that for 10 years. And that seemed to actually help my symptoms because I was getting my period less. So now I know my endo wasn't growing as fast. But I got off the pill I think four years ago or five years ago and I just wanted to give my body a break and I all of the symptoms started to kick in I was I started getting period pain when I didn't have my period so I would finish my period and then a week later I would be so sick with this weird pain it wasn't it was like period pain but it was it felt a little bit more like toxic if that makes sense it was like it was it was horrible so I thought this isn't right so I went to a doctor at my GP and I said something's not right I'd like to go and see someone like some scans like I know something isn't right and she didn't believe me she was like it's fine like it's just period pain have some painkillers and I was like no like I, I really would like to go and get checked um, for you know something in my uterus like something's not right and anyway, I debated with her for a while and then she was like, oh, okay. And she just reluctantly gave me a referral. <clears throat> um, so I went and saw a specialist, a gynecologist, and she sent me off for a scan. And that scan showed that I had a eight centimeter cyst on my right, o on my right ovary. Yeah. Um, and then she called me back pretty much immediately and said we need to get this out because they didn't know the nature of the cyst so they didn't know if it was cancerous. So I think it was three days later I got um, surgery, I got a laparoscopy and a laparoscopy is the only way you can detect endometriosis. It's when they insert little cameras through your, um, through little like incisions in your stomach. Um, I have four, four incisions, I think you only got two. Um, and they they went in there and they took the cyst out. It wasn't cancerous, thank God. But they did discover I had very bad endo. 
I think that the worst experience, the worst pain, the worst time of my life through my endo was when my cyst, it was eight centimeters at the time, my cyst kept rupturing. So I was actually here at work and there were two girls here. Everyone else was at boot camp. And um, I, I fell to the floor and I was like, something is really wrong. Um, one of the girls came over and she was like, oh, she got me like pain, pain relief and I tried to take it. I was like, I, I started shaking and then my, my limbs started going numb. So like my hands were going numb, my feet were numb. And then I started sweating and I was like, you need to call an ambulance. She's like, no, no, we'll go to the hospital. Like we'll get in the car. And I tried to get up. I was like, no, nah, I need an ambulance. So the ambulance came, they gave me morphine. They gave me two hits of morphine and it did nothing um and then i think they gave me another one and I, they like all that could do was reduce my pain enough for them to put me on the bed and then they put me on the bed and they took me to the hospital and we got scans done and um blood tests and everything they were checking it wasn't my appendix and it, we figured out that it was my cyst it, that it was rupturing so it was leaking and it would reduce in size so when that happened, I was like, oh, okay, awesome. My cyst is smaller. So I was like, even though that really sucked having my cyst burst, it's so good because my cyst is smaller. But what I then soon found out was when I got my period, the cyst filled back up. So then the next, I think it was two months after that, I was at the Gold Coast and it was in the middle of the night and I was sleeping in my bedroom and the other girls Yacht was in her bedroom, the other girls were in the, um, in the, in the lounge room and my bedroom's quite away from everyone and it happened again. My sis burst and I was like, oh my God, I didn't have my phone on me. I was like trying to call out, no one could hear me. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, it, it's so painful. It's worse than any operation, any period, like anything I've ever had. It's such a bad pain. And, um... It took me an hour I just crawled out on the floor and I opened the door and I got like halfway down the hallway and I was like Rosie who's my one of my best friends and she came in they called an ambulance and same thing happened when I got scans um, pretty much the same thing happened so that's when they decided to put me on that drug Cineril and yeah everything just went downhill from there really Okay, so um, I'll run you guys through the surgery I got, my most recent one. Um, I got a laparoscopy, I got all the endo removed from my uterus, they found it on my organs, my bowels, my bladder, and they even found it all the way up to my diaphragm. So what they do is they burn it off. And they also removed my 15 centimeter cyst and they removed my whole left ovary. <laughs> they removed my whole left ovary, so now I only have one ovary. So I wish when I was younger, like even 17, if someone told me, hey, period pain is normal, this amount of period pain is not normal, go and get a laparoscopy, go and check that you, you know, if you've got endo or not. It's all well, I've seen all these influences like, oh, endometri hashtag endometriosis awareness, hashtag endo, like everyone's spreading the word, which is so good, but no one's giving any solutions or any advice on how to deal with it or what, what you can do to better yourself in, if you are in the situation where you have endo. My advice is, if you've got it and you're in the position to be able to look into IVF, even if you're not looking to start a family yet, go and freeze your eggs. It's, it's quite a big process. This is what I've been doing for the last five, six months, five months. I've been trying to save my eggs. So I've only got one ovary. That ovary, how I explained before, had an eight centimeter cyst four years ago that I got cut out. So all of that um, egg reserve got, you know, cut out. So Yacht here, who by the way is getting induced tomorrow to have a child, thanks. Um, Yacht also has endo and Yacht's pregnant. So do you want to tell everyone 
about your experience. Yep. So and how you ignored me all those years when I told you you had endo. Look, I think my story is probably more common than yours because it's not as severe. Um, but pretty much from my first period, I had really bad period pain on um, my stomach, my legs, my back. I still remember I went to a physio because I thought I'd pulled my back at tennis training, but it was actually just period pain. Um, <laughs> I had an armchair that at the time, I don't know why, but sitting in this armchair would make me feel better while I was like throwing up and stuff from period pain because the sides were really high and I would sit in it. It was obviously, you know, like a crouch position. Um, but yeah, I guess my periods got progressively worse with period pain and then None of my friends really had really bad period pain. I just thought, I wouldn't even think anything until I met Des and she had really bad period pain. So I was like, oh, obviously it's just normal. And um, I remember like one day I crawled to your bedroom. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. Like crawled to your bedroom. I was like, Des, I'm dying. I don't know what to do. And I was panicking and you put me in the shower and we like hot watered my stomach for an hour and I threw up everywhere. It was just really disgusting. Um, I ended up, and then you had to force feed me food so I could it have- It was salt and vinegar chips. Yep, so I could have an aphrodisiac and something else together and it was so gross. But that's just like some of the normal experiences that I was having and um, when Ness found out she had endo, she was just like looking at me. You need to go get checked for endo. And I was like, I don't have endometriosis. I have like a fear of needles and surgery and stuff. So. I just wanted to avoid the whole situation. I stuck my head in the sand and I didn't want to know about it. In At New York Fashion Week, I almost didn't make the flight because I had this really bad period. I passed out in the shower. George found me and there was like vomit everywhere and they had to carry me to the bed. That's when I got me drugs. And yeah, I had like 10 heat packs on my stomach when I got on the plane. I got burns from it by the time we got to Brisbane. And that was like the last straw. I kind of went to my doctor and I was like, yeah, I think there's something wrong. So went and saw a specialist in February, um, so a couple of months later, and yeah, I went straight into surgery and found out I had endometriosis. Um, I couldn't take all of it out because I've got 11 year old scarring on some ligaments, um, but we're hoping that during my pregnancy it stretched it all out, but we won't know until after. And yeah, that's where I'm up to now. So I'm hoping it's fixed some of that scarring, fingers crossed, but yeah, see. So we've got some tips for if you are in so much pain. Um, we have, there's like two types of pain. There's like pain that you can manage. It sucks, but like you can just get by sort of. And then there's another pain where you're panicking and it's like manic. It is like- We call it our manic period pain. It's when you can't even actually think and fix yourself. You need to call someone or like we'd call each other and literally say, I don't, I don't know what to do. You can't think. Yeah, and I remember one time I was in my bathroom and I was in, I was panicking and I started calling everyone in my phone, but I called you, you didn't pick up. I called my mum, she didn't pick up. I called Rosie, she didn't pick up. And then I ended up calling my dad and I was like, dad. And dad came home and he was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And he like, I was like, get me this. And he like went and so for what helps me when I'm in that much pain is, um, Missindol. Yeah. So nighttime Missindol, it has a, it's like a, a muscle relaxant in it. It's, it's specifically for period pain and migraine. So you can get it over the counter as well, but it, it does have a sedative in it. So they don't give it out a lot, but that saves us. A lot. Yeah, and also not like heat packs obviously are awesome, but only last year I discovered that there's like sticky heat packs that last for 15 hours and you stick it on and it lasts the whole night. You wake up and it's still hot and, and it's awesome. And they're awesome because like you can put them under your clothes. So like I was at a 21st last year and I had three of them on. No one knew, but for me I was like in so much relief slash sweating but it's okay because i was in pain but yeah i think those two things are really like the only two things and just yeah. curling up in bed and trying to ride it out mm. Fun. so i have heaps of questions um people want to know how you stay active like how we stay active how we get on with how, how do we work well i think like having 
a diagnosis and people understanding that sometimes you can't is really helpful because someone will cover you. Um, that's pretty important. But how we stay active, I guess it's just you just push persistence and like yeah. just knowing you have to. It's more like a mental strength that you develop because it's kind of easy to fall into the I'm too sore kind of thing. Like obviously you're going to be really sore some days, but when you can and you have the opportunity, I think if you just take advantage of it, that's the best way to kind of push through. Yeah, I think you can also like grade your workouts depending on how much pain you're in. So yeah. lately I've, I've had a really sore stomach, so I'm doing deep water running, which is like, there's no impact. It's just, it's really light and it's, it's like comforting because the water's like hugging you. It's really good to, um, still exercise and still move even if you are in so much pain don't make that an, as an excuse to not work out or just to sit there and do nothing i think like a lot of women fall into that trap yeah it's really easy to and you kind of especially when it's that period where it's really bad you kind of not feel sorry for yourself but it's hard to like try and think positive but once you get into a, a mental routine of like trying to push through and you have people around you can help too then it's a lot easier I think. A lot of people want to know how it's affected our sex life because with endo you have a lot of pain. A lot of pain. I don't even use tampons because it hurts that much so having sex is like poor Giorgio. <laughs> yeah look it's not fun. Yeah. You have to like find certain things at work and majority don't, mm. but so, yes. sorry. So obviously you can still have sex if you have endo, but as you said, you'll find certain things at work, positions that work. And, and certain ones that are just really Yeah, but limits. do you know what's interesting? What doesn't hurt for me hurts, hurts for, for me, you. Yeah. But that's because I've got a forward tilting uterus and Yacht has a backwards tilting uterus. So obviously we're opposite mm. and that makes sense. Mm. So yeah, there'll be different things that don't hurt and you've just got to like stick to that yeah. one thing. A lot of girls write to me and say, um, I went to my GP, they said, I don't have anything wrong with me. I'm sure I do like help me. My GP won't give me a referral. So that happened to me as well. So you need to just, Either if they won't give you one, go to a new GP, tell them you want a referral to see a gynecologist, tell them like you vomit from your period pain, just tell them like your symptoms. Think, yeah, but a lot of doctors are like, oh, it's just severe dysmenorrhea. Yeah, like a lot of doctors don't understand. Just keep finding a new GP until you find one that will give you a referral to a gyno. Um, for me, yacht falling pregnant was amazing because it gives me hope, it gives everyone hope who has endo um, that you can fall pregnant. And she's had a pretty good pregnancy, so I've been very blessed. Yeah. Um, it didn't take long after my laparoscopy. That was only, I think it was my third period cycle I felt pregnant with the help of hormone um, treatment. I was put on tablets. To increase my ovulation yeah ovulation they monitored it and yeah so I was really lucky um, and I know a lot of other people who have endometriosis who did the same plan who fell pregnant pretty soon after as well so yeah like I said before hopefully it's helped my period pain going forward as well that'll be so good yeah. and hopefully you can fall pregnant naturally with no hormones next time yeah hey guys I'm Giorgio, um, obviously Bessie's fiance, and I'm here today to give you a bit of an insight on my perspective of uh, endometriosis. All right, let's go. My, f my natural reaction, I guess, um, to be completely honest, gets a bit upset. Um, we're, we're guys, we don't experience period pain. We don't experience um, bad period pain. So, and we can't actually see that there's something wrong. Um, in saying that, we've got to, well, what I normally do is I quickly then come to terms with, okay, she's actually hurting. I know she's got, um, something that she's struggling with. And then I have a look at what we're doing or what we're doing in that day to try and overcome that. Um, I guess empathy is probably my best bit of advice. 
but then also understanding where empathy becomes too much because if you constantly feed a problem, uh, the problem's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. When my natural reaction now is, okay, we've got this issue that we need to address. She's got endone, she's experiencing bad cramps, bad pain, um, her ovaries are flaring up or whatever, but then how can we still go on living with our lives? And I guess um, this might answer a couple of other questions or give people a little bit of an insight. You, you really need to understand that endo is not the end of the world. So everybody, um, I guess the question that I want everybody to ask themselves is, what do I want to get out of talking to someone about endo? Okay, and if that answer is, I just want to talk about it, or I just want to hear my problem, it's probably not the right way to address it. Try and address it with, okay, I know that I've got an issue, I'm talking to somebody, or I'm trying to do something to make my current situation better. How we manage your pain. Okay, so, um, I guess one, the first step is addressing it, so knowing that we've, we've got something to deal with. Um, heat packs are really, really good but then obviously not putting heat packs on for four or five days, putting it more on acutely. So going, cool, let's get a like little heat pack and let's leave it on for 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, let's make the next move to do something active and not go run a marathon or do something. It might be simple like, let's go for lunch. So I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna go walk, and I'm gonna go for lunch. Um, Painkillers, <laughs> hard one. Because yeah, this is a hard one because Sometimes I'm like, give me Panadine Fort, give me Valium, give me Mesendone, give me Endone. Like I, endone, I sometimes sorry. I need Endone, which is morphine. And he's like, no. Nah. And I'm like, you don't understand. And I don't. I don't understand the full severity, but I do know that the more we fuel thinking, hey, this is the end of the world, the more, the closer to the end of the world we're going to be. Um, so we really need to just go, okay, I'm going to have my Panadol for four hours and then I'm going to do something to try and take my mind off it. So the biggest thing dealing with acute pain is trying to take your mind off it as much as you possibly can. Give your body what it needs just in the short term. So it might be two Panadols and a heat pack for 20 minutes. That'll give you a position where you can actually stand up and do something and then try and continue doing something for a little bit longer than three or four hours that the, the Panadol is going to wear off. The girl needs to come to the party halfway. She needs to meet him halfway. She needs to try and be as strong as she possibly can, okay? Providing strength and trying to be strong eventually will lead into you being stronger. The second part of that, the guy needs to educate themselves on what endo actually is. So the girl sends out her information to him and says, hey, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what's going on. 90% of guys won't know what endo is. Sorry, endo won't know what endo is, um, but the more and more they, the more and more research they do, they'll understand exactly what it is. So I researched the crap out of it, and then I actually found that some of the things that Desi was telling me weren't, weren't necessarily true, or some of the things that Desi was telling me had been miscommunicated along the way. So then I was able to take what she was overthinking and overmaking a problem and going, well, this isn't actually the issue that we're struggling with right now, why don't we do this and this and take our mind off it? Yeah, okay, so I was having this chat with my mom yesterday. A normal pregnancy, you go through, say, nine months of have this scan, have that scan, um, and you get all excited when you're just about to go for the scan, but then you also get a sense of anxiety and you get nervous about it. Mine jumped in from the word go, so. Your, your anxiety? Yeah. It did, to be completely honest with everybody. So when you go through um, something like IVF, you've got to go through a blood test first to see if you've got any eggs or if you can produce eggs. Your egg reserve. Yeah, your eggs reserve. And then... And then um, you had to do a sperm test. And then I had to do a sperm test as well, which fucking made me pretty nervous. Um, and it very, very, very uncomfortable as well. Um, and then... Soz. After that, after that you have to go and check to see how the eggs are developing. Um, and if there's any there, then that's another sense of anxiety because you get nervous about around that test and then you've got to go another three days to see if they've matured. And then you've got to go pick them, you've got to see how many you get. After that, you've got to wait to see every single day how they develop and if they mix. 
um, and then you've got to put it in and wait 14 days. So I guess it isn't the easiest process. However, every single day, um, oh, and I forgot, I had to go through all the hormonal changes as well. So <laughs> also I want to say, I get, I guess, without this being a question, if you do have endometriosis and you've asked yourself, do I want to get better? And what do I want to achieve out of it? Not everybody is designed to inspire, but if you possibly can, it will help you as much. You know, it will help you get over your symptoms as well. So I see, the, I see this all the time. People put up signs, I've got anxiety, I've got depression, I've got endometriosis. Please feel sorry for me. Let's not feel sorry for you. I don't want to feel sorry for you because getting people, someone feeling sorry for me, I wouldn't really want that, all right? I would want them to show some empathy towards my current situation, yes, but I would much rather them help me, okay? Or let me help them, sorry, or let them help me. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is know that, know what you've got, understand it, but now try and make a decision to get over it. And then after you've made a decision to get through, not get over it, to get through it and to push on, use what you've learned to inspire somebody else. Have a meme, but don't just talk about endometriosis. Have a meme and talk about endometriosis and go around in a circle and go, okay, so what are you doing to lessen your symptoms? What are you doing to help? What do you do when your boyfriend doesn't understand and how does he get over it? Um, and before you know it, within like six to eight weeks, she's all gonna be having a massive conversation about all the positives on how you've overcome something and has made you that extra little bit stronger as well. If you're gonna take anything out of this video, um, you know, really take into consideration what Georgia, is, everything Georgia has said about helping yourself, um, be inspired by Yacht, and her story and how she's pregnant, giving birth tomorrow. Looking and, amazing as well. Yeah, looking amazing. Stayed fit throughout her whole pregnancy. Yeah. And also look at me, like I was a su really bad sufferer my whole life and now I feel better than ever. And my I'm probably got worse disease and wor I'm internally worse, but my mind is better and I think it's all about hmm. the way you think and the way you perceive it. So. Yeah, just have a think about everything we've said and hopefully you can get better too. And you will. The more you think that you will, again, ident identify the problems, but then think on how you can fix it. If you have any questions, please leave them below or you can DM me and please give us a like and a subscribe. Guys, um, everything that we speak about in this video is purely our opinions on our stories and um, our perspective on endometriosis. Um, we're not doctors or in that field of medicine, so if you need professional help, please go and seek it from a professional doctor.